All right, give me a second here. We'll get this going again. Hold on. Please hold. Doing kind of a series of guides here for everybody. Hoping this helps some new players out. Hoping. Especially since the uh, wiki and stuff don't get updated all that often, so... Doesn't happen as often as it should. All right, let's go ahead and bring it back a second here. It could be a little slow. So, beginning on the server. Generally, when you start on the server, you get all that stuff I showed you in the previous video, and you're wondering where to go from here. Now, since I give you the tools to get started, you can go ahead and just build a base. That's normally what you do. But... On some servers, you don't have a whole lot of stuff. So, <clears throat> what I suggest doing is learning how to survive from scratch with nothing. At least the first time you play, you really should. So, we're going to start with your player, your armor, and the basics of the game. And getting starter survival to a point where you can actually survive. That's where we're going to start. A uh, couple things to note. Getting into your player... Is really easy you just hit tab that's how you get to your player information it'll show you your level how many xp points you've earned your suit temperature body radiation if a planet has it you know your typical character status effects your armor what it is value durability yada 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 it'll also show comfort zone radiation protection it shows a few little details there you have a survival constructor built into your suit now this thing can really save your ass. You can build a survival tool right off rip. So you can literally start with nothing on a server, whereas you, that wasn't the case before. And that's how we're going to start. So we're going to build that. I'm going to use my virtual backpack command from last time. Oh, wrong place. And we're just going to throw everything into our wipe safe storage for now. We're going to pretend like we ain't got squat, except that HV. Just for the sake of... If you crash land on a planet, so to speak. Now, survival from the beginning isn't too difficult. It's really not. Let me uh, exit god mode here. You're going to have to eat, so collecting food is essential. It really is. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you'll find. What I recommend is just running around, figuring out what you can mouse over, and if that little yellow box pops up, it's something you can grab. You'll need ore too. Most of the starter planets have a pretty good set of ores that you can grab. It does not automatically put them into an inventory, so you will have to grab them. Survival tool is really handy, especially if you crash land on a planet. Starting with it can be a real pain, though. <laughs> it really can be. Now notice how I ran out of stamina running around. There is a trick to prevent that where, the, where you can run literally hundreds of meters almost indefinitely without running out of stamina. Not everybody instinctively figures this out right off rip. So how do you get further? Well, you hit J to start up your jetpack. And you start running a little bit, release shift and jump. Every time you hit the ground, you hold shift and continue moving forward. And your stamina will literally last you just about freaking forever. You can also just jump. You can. And not use your jetpack. We're going to make our way towards a copper deposit so I can show you how mining works too. Now, mind you, there are a lot of servers out there where it's still difficult to survive on. Won't have the easy start you have here on some of them. So if you're looking for a more challenging start, definitely look for one of those servers or play single player. You have all kinds of options in the single player menu. The focus of this is all about multiplayer, though. Now, you do have an attack mode for taking care of pesky critters like this, where you can attack them in defense mode but to be fair you're probably not going to get too close to the ones that run 
It is handy for warding off spiders, though. You can kind of defend yourself against spiders pretty well. Towards a copper deposit. Hopefully we find rocks on our way. Not just food and stuff. Now, something that they did that I don't really... I don't know if I agree with or not. I mean, it simplified it, but... At the same time, I kind of liked the depth it had in the food system before. You pick up food in categories. That's kind of how this works. So when you pick up honey... You don't pick up honey. You pick up natural sweetener from this weird, viney... I don't know what the heck to call it. Used to be honey you got out of there. Instead, you get natural sweetener. You pick up vegetables. You pick up fruits. You pick up st uh, stimulator or something. I don't remember what it's called. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Buds. <laughs> you get buds. Kill this alien bug here because it looked at me funny. You can get meat from critters, but to be fair, you can make meat from vegetables, too, so not really an important thing. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can also shift and click F and auto loot pretty much everything except for cargo containers. I don't know why, but that's how that works. And I am at level three. And no, I don't think there are any shortcut keys for switching modes on weapons. I think you have to use the right-click the right-click menu that comes up for everything. Pick up a few more things here. Hopefully, we find some more ore. Defense mode. Yep, they can stun you for the record. They can also damage you a little bit. Um, there are different medical status effects that can be uh, put on you as well. They're kind of a pain, kind of not bad. Some of them you can deal with. Some of them are just going to kill you, so you're better off just suiciding, coming back, picking up your stuff, and moving on with your day. There is not an experience penalty for death. I don't know if that's a yet thing or... Yeah, some are really terrible. They really are. So a lot of people just die and come back. They're like, screw it. If you ever have to do that, you can hit the tilde key to pull up the console and type in... Destroy me and you die. <laughs> Gets rid of all your status effects immediately. Really easy. You'll want to remember that. <laughs> And respawning is relatively painless, too. When you die in a situation like that, you just respawn at current location. There'll be a diamond on your map up in the top right to tell you where your stuff is. Make your way back to your backpack. And, like an Etch-A-Sketch, all of those statuses go away magically. Consider it an exploit of the system or whatever you'd like. I mean, again, Shift-F picks up the package. Shift F, loots the bug we were at if we didn't loot it. And we're done. Look, status status effects all gone, like magic. <laughs> yeah, you can use your drone to get the backpack. We're we're gonna use the drone in a minute once we get to our uh mining location here. Ah, there's our copper deposit we were heading towards. So back to the shift jump thing, so we have almost infinite stamina. Using up stamina uses you you have to eat. So the more stamina you waste, the more eating you're going to do. You're not going to get a whole lot of food to start off with, to be fair here. Not on any planet. So you're just better off just kind of randomly collecting stuff to make your way to getting food. Your survival constructor that we will make here in a little bit will help you to preserve that food for a little while. Another thing to note, if you have a hard time finding resources, you can use your survival tool. To break down stone and you can create resources from the stone you pick up so all of these little crushed stone bits that they that they drop make it easy yes Sinclair is right be uh, so so smoky beaches have a lot of food around them almost all the time hence the reason we were heading this direction in the first place 
is... Okay, there's our copper deposit. Okay, we are close. The copper deposit was close to a beach. Um, in case you're not aware, M opens the map. You can see your surroundings, at least what you've discovered through the fog of war. Again, some servers do not have fog of war enabled. So some servers, you'll see the entire map. Some servers, you won't. Some servers, land claim zones don't work either. Something else we're not getting into right now. <laughs> There's all kinds of different food types, um, but they all, like I said, break down into categories. Natural stimulant, confetti moss scrapings, vegetables, fruits. It's pretty darn basic. And you just need to collect one of each group type, doesn't matter what they are, visually, and you can manufacture everything you need to manufacture. As you step up through constructors and move to the processor, you'll get more complex recipes. Okay. We're going to continue on over here for a minute because we need this for ammunition now as an alternative to picking up grain or picking up all this other stuff um specifically plant fibers um you can replace plant fibers with wood so you can knock these down fence mode and pick up the wood logs that drop and process those logs into fiber. It's really freaking handy. I think it's defense bow that pops these trees. There we are. And we got no log. Maybe we have to use resource mining. We're going to double check that. Yep. Okay. I thought it was defense mode. <laughs> Something else the designers of the game thought would be hilarious, I think. Is some trees do not give you wood. <laughs> or the wood will fall and go through the ground. That's something else you got to watch. So try to collect it quickly when that happens. Those trees must not give us wood. Let's try this. Did not give us wood. Okay. We're in a lot of not getting wood. Full we'll work. There it is. There's our copper deposit. Had to find it. If you're on a desert planet and you see one of these dead trees, last I knew, they don't give you wood either. <laughs> Just so you know. Oh, it auto-collects them? Okay, I'm glad somebody knew that. I was going to look at my inventory. I'd have figured it out. I didn't know they fixed that. The chainsaw doesn't auto-collect. Neither do some other things. Alright. Oh. We'll also get this. Basically just tea leaves. Spice. Alright, copper deposit. Notice the pop-up next to my status bar. Okay, I wasn't looking. Like I said, logs can be processed into plant fibers later. Spiders, look at this. Now, if you hit a spider, all of the spiders in the area will run away. If you chase after them and keep on them, they will not harm you. They will just walk through you, all cute and adorable and deadly-like. Just keep after them. Don't, don't let them give up. And you will generally not get hurt. You just chase them down and murder them. And see? Harmless spiders. They are the least dangerous thing on the planet as long as you keep on top of them. And keep moving. <laughs> I just chase them down and murder them. <laughs> Another one down. There's a third one here somewhere. Where is he? Another reason you want to make sure to have the jetpack activated. Jetpack helps you get away sometimes. All right, we have killed all the spiders. I run backwards, yeah, and chase them when they run. Yeah, I used to. And then I figured out that they, they're not really harmful. You can just chase them endlessly and murder them. It's delicious. I love it. So, you can drill with the survival tool now. Interesting, right? And this allows you to pull deposits out of the ground that you otherwise might not have been able to get. And it also automatically picks them up. Which is really handy. And drilling is really easy to do. And there is another way you can drill. It's something else I'll show you. So that's the drilling by hand. Allows you to create nice smooth ramps you can get in and out of really easily. Or you can hit F5, bring out your drone, and take your drone into the hole and use it to mine as well. 
Most people just use their drone and mine remotely. So to be fair, if you're in PvP mining like this, I will pick you off. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I will gladly kill somebody if I see them mining like this in PvP and I've caught plenty doing it. Plenty. <laughs> Come up behind them, see their drone, easy headshot. <laughs> Shotgun does wonders. <clears throat> Alright, we got our copper ore. You can hit F5 again to put the drone away. You don't have to come out of the hole. Everything just magically goes to your inventory, by the way. The drone does not have any carrying capacity or anything else that would seem obvious. It just all goes to your inventory. Like magic. Yeah, I don't ever get to play the game. I really don't. I'm doing this because I found a few players needed help. <clears throat> I really have. Um... Now, you notice in our last video when we first started, we got the Robinson Protocol from the PDA. To be fair, most multiplayer servers do not update this enough or they have customs. As stuff works and tends not to work, I completely ignore the PDA. I really do. I do not use this freaking thing because it goes through various states of functionality. Sometimes it works in between updates, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they don't even put anything in the patch notes to let you know it's changed. Same thing happens with the config file, by the way. Config file changed today. Not a damn thing about it in the patch notes. For any server owners watching. Yeah, there were changes in there. <laughs> they didn't update the version either. They just kind of slid that under the radar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we have to check that stuff with every single update, no matter how small it is. We have, to, we have to check the config file to make sure they didn't screw any of that up. Yeah, some of the scenarios are pretty fun. Um, again, if you use the PDA, do expect that sometimes it's not going to work. I mean, I'm just going to be flat out honest there. Some of the scenarios have really good PDAs, but then you go back a few years ago and none of those scenarios work. Even some of the scenarios from like six months ago, the PDAs are not functioning. It's something that happens. They do not maintain backwards compatibility as they develop the game with a whole lot of stuff. We have gone through periods where the YAML is significantly changed, the PDA files have significantly changed, the config files significantly changed, and there is no backwards compatibility with a lot of it. So do try to make sure to use stuff that's recent. That is my best advice for you there. We won't get into too much of that because this is this tutorial's more for multiplayer than anything. That's really what it's for. So we've gotten some copper, we've gotten some other random stuff that we found lying around. Or lying around stuff. Hey, look at that. Plant protein. We'll grab some more rocks. Rock. It's a rock. Saw someone in the game yesterday talk about a mining mission. Yeah, there are missions in the game, and I'll update the PDA at some point this week, now that we're a little further along in 10. I don't feel they'll be making too many PDA changes past this point. They usually don't. But in the early couple of updates, they usually do, so I don't update the PDA to reflect that. Just so everybody knows. At least not on our server. All right, so the next thing we need is a survival constructor. You'll notice that they have lock icons on them. You have to level. Well, you have to upgrade them in the tech tree. So you go to tech tree, we're at level four, plenty beyond. Usually you'll find stuff in tools you can use, like an ore scanner, really handy for certain ore nodes, and a multi-tool, really handy for scrapping stuff out. Portable worker light really doesn't matter because you have a light on your suit, so I never make them. A um, couple other things, miscellaneous, this is usually where all your other stuff is, like portable constructor, portable heater cooler, which sort of works, um, and other things that are relevant. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them, they're just relevant. Like fuel packs and starter blocks and flares, if you even use those. I never use the flares. Auto mining devices are in here, just random stuff. Then you get the stuff for bases, capital vessels, small vessels, weapons. 
the best weapon you can carry around early on is the shotgun. It is literally the only weapon you'll need for quite a while. Shotguns are great. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. I really can't. So we've unlocked the shotgun and a few other things, little tidbits we'll need. Now we need to make the, the portable constructor. We still need to find silicon ore. So either we've got to find a silicon deposit somewhere on the map, or we need to find a rock that gives us silicon. Now, the rocks are generally placed by biome. So you'll find like a forest biome, you'll find a couple different rock types here, you'll find a beach biome, you'll find different rocks there. All of these different areas that tend to look a little bit different have different stuff in them. The reason we came over here is because we collected everything else except for silicon. It's by the beach, woods are close, so we've got two different biomes that are really, really close proximity. Good chance of running across something we haven't already collected. Hey there, Bromius. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Yeah, my favorite rocks are at the bottom of the lake, too. We'll go to the lake next. So, we're going to put it in resource mode. Find a couple of little silicon ingots, ores. And we only got one out of that rock. It chipped me. Ooh, chippy little thing. Hey, look, spiders. Fence mode. And we go back to being really aggressive with the spiders. Oh, it's two different groups. This is going to be tough to manage. running from daddy i just want to play with you promise i won't kill you hard i just want to hug you with my survival tool that's all one when in doubt jetpack out <laughs> The spiders kind of have tiny hitboxes. They're not as bad as those scorpion things, though. If you ever run across those scorpions, oh, God. Oh, spider. There he is. Those things are terrible. They got the tiniest hitboxes. They're really fast, like ridiculously fast. Oh, I hate the scorpions. <laughs> yeah, Hoth is everybody's nightmare. Those golems take freaking forever to kill there. And then the POIs are all amped up. We're still looking for silicon. Because I think we need two of those little ore nodes to be able to do anything. There it is. Or is that another one of those? That's a brain. Natural stimulant. Still looking for rocks. By the way, it is highly suggested not to kill anything bigger than you until you get that shotgun made. Just a recommendation. And yes, thank God the tool doesn't use stamina anymore. The tool used to use stamina, and it would literally leave you stranded sometimes for a while. It was terrible. I don't know why they ever made that decision. I don't. Really crappy. All right, now you'll notice we're pretty close to out of food. There's a reason we haven't left the lake area yet, and this would be the reason. We're going to go down, and we are going to look for seaweed. It is the best way to get food for you, period. Not that this helps us a whole lot now. I mean, you'll get stuff because these are nearby, but lakes are even better than that, usually. Aha! Silicon bearing. Here, if we came closer to the beach, we'd find. Okay, we're in water here. Now, side note, there are creatures in the water sometimes now. Yeah, great. The lake is a great place to level to. It really is. But 
away our weapons so we can just swim. We are not finding a whole lot down here at the moment. Up, oh, up, oh, there we go. Some seaweed. Now there are two different kinds of seaweed that I've noticed. There's our, there's these really short ones, and there's some really wide, crazy ones. This lake appears to be filled with these tall, thin ones, so... Ah, there's one. Yeah, there's the other type of seaweed. So you got both types in this lake. Not all of them have. You'll also find other things in lakes, too. Sometimes there's ore nodes at the bottom, or you'll find these things. Alien Plasma ZR1. You'll find those. That'll help you with medical... Um, you'll find other stuff too, depending on the lake. Little trick, just so you know. If you find yourself surrounded by enemies and near the edge of a lake, you can escape those enemies relatively easily by going to the bottom of a lake, switching to resource drill mode, and drilling yourself into a hole underneath the lake where you can breathe. Look at that. You can breathe down here, and you have no water, you won't drown, and it's great. The one reason the terrible physics in the game are kind of a godsend sometimes. <laughs> no enemies can reach you down here except for the teleropods or whatever the heck they're called. They're new ones. Those are the only enemies that can reach you. And generally, they won't bother you if you're out of the water. So, if you are concerned with them, however... Just drill a little cave underneath. It auto levels as you go, for the most part. And then you've got a nice little opening and a nice little cave you can work out of. So it keeps you safe from the Xerax attacks because you're just. You're not building a base or anything down here. You're just doing little simple stuff. As long as you don't build a base and do all that crazy stuff, you'll be fine. Otherwise, the Xerax can come right under the lake bed and take your shit. And they will. I promise you. <laughs> they have no problem cleaning your base out for themselves. None. So we've got our nice little area dug out here. We should have enough to build our survival constructor. Portable constructor, whatever you want to call it. And we can do a little bit of processing. Now you'll also notice it's 5 minutes 43 seconds, it says, or 5 in-game hours 43 seconds, whatever that's supposed to mean, till sundown. Once sundown happens, you can run into night raptors and all kinds of other stuff. Like, the, the creatures kind of change at night on a lot of planets. So, nice safe place under the water. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know a few people didn't know about those. And the sad thing is you can't use your gun underwater. That's something to note. Your gun does not defend you under the water. None of the weapons fire underwater at all. I helmet back on. See? Cannot shoot this weapon underwater. None of the weapons work. Period. So expect that. <laughs> and my apologies really nothing i can do about it well actually you could you can adjust that in the config file and i don't know why they haven't okay so we can put our food in here any ores we have pretty much everything we need can be done from right here and it will unlock stuff and this will act as a temporary refrigerator so now we have the ability to build a few things, make a few things, you know, we're, we're getting there. We can make some medical stuff like bandages to heal and some medicines should we need them. Low level stuff, but it's a start. We can make a multi-tool, we can make projectile pistols and shotguns once we get a few more items. But, here you go. I love you, buddy. So there we are. Get you a good start. It'll get you to where you can build a base. Eventually you can make light armor and a handful of other things in here. Really handy. Um, a couple things to note. There are two different types of deposits that you need to worry about. There are voxel-based deposits and there are entity-based deposits. The entity-based deposits look like little rabble, rabbit turds all clumped under the ground. And if you have the ore scanner, this ore scanner specifically here... You can actually find them as you get close to them, 
You just have to have it in your inventory or on your bar. And when you put when you equip the drill, it will light those up. Yeah, I have problems with the small turrets. You're talking the uh, the really, really little early game turrets, right? That aren't actually like full grown turrets. They're just little ones you can put on the wall and shit. Those the turrets you're talking about. Yeah, they tend not to shoot critters. <laughs> they don't really protect anybody anymore. In PvP, I mean, they'll slow somebody down going through your base, but they're not particularly worthwhile, to be honest with you. So yeah, that's the gist of early game survival. Everything else is just pretty basic stuff. Um, if you hit F2, it brings up a menu for all your structures that you can build and everything. There are default ones built in for the game. So if I take and I go with, let's see here, this button. That is the stock. So that's all stock stuff. There are prefabs for every kind of structure type. Go look for it. Okay. So, yeah, small turrets are definitely wonky. So when you want to build a CV, you can see what level for the minimum CV is. You'll need level 10. When you're ready to build an SV, level 5. Ready to build an HV, you can start unlocking HVs at level 1. Start getting around at. And when you're ready to build a base, you can build a base at level 3. And the further you go down in the blueprints, the higher the levels get and the more they require. Clear up to unlock level 20 in size class 3. Another thing to discuss, size classes, since we're talking about survival. Um, if you're in single player, you can set the size class to basically be whatever the hell you want. Clear up to unlimited. If you're playing on a multiplayer server, then size class will be listed in the server browser, I think, for most servers, if I remember correctly. Pretty sure it's still listed there. So always look at that stuff if it's something that's important to you. Um, most servers are between class 6 and class 10. That's where most servers tend to float. Our servers specifically, for the sake of these videos, they have an 8.49 max class size in PvE and a 5.49 max class size in PvP. No, ours is not class 20. It is class 8.49 and it is enforced. If anybody built a class 20... Well, it's no longer any good, I promise you that. <laughs> and no, mine's not class 20. Mine can't be. I, can, I, I can't even bypass that stuff, even as an admin. It's still, it still warns me. Same with the curse filter. Which we do employ a filter. So if I say, or anything else, it will actually go through and put a strike against me. Um... Trying to think of something that's not too bad, but you know what? Never mind. We're not gonna we're not gonna tempt fate. So there you have it. But that's that's pretty much uh, as much as you need. I mean, information-wise, get started on the game. The rest is pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Taking out lights does lower the class size big time. It really does. Um, let's see here. Let me look at something a second. A couple of easy things to keep in mind. Don't attack too much with your survival tool. Try to avoid as much as you can. If you're out at night, be very careful. Some planets have night raptors, and even worse than that, there are some things in this game that will just relentlessly come after you, and if you can't kill them, you are toast. And again, if you end up with any of those status messages, you can just destroy me and move on with your day. <laughs> you really can. Um, makes it pretty easy. He's like, everything is passive. Once you're in an SV, it might as well be. There isn't much to worry about in an SV until you come across the POIs and stuff. Um, let's go through some map things here real quick. To kind of help you out in survival. So, this is the in-game map. And this is the area we have discovered so far. Need the lights for bling, right? These are other players' bases that are around me. 
POIs have a teardrop style icon, kind of like you see on a map, like a regular map. Um, this icon. You can set icons for areas. So if you right click, you can click waypoint, click accept, and then when you look for that marker, it'll show you how far away you are from that point. Yeah, yeah, I should give him a full peek at the full map. Um, basically, the map only shows you what you discover at first, and you can share these points out publicly as well with anybody on the play field. So if you click that base that you shared as a waypoint, you can click this, which says share public, and everybody that's currently active on the play field will also see that marker. So if you're trying to help somebody out or trying to find somebody, it makes it really... Full map. This is the planet map. This is the sector map. Now, if you notice here, sector map is done in 3D. It only shows what you discover at first. This is where we currently are. We are on Artifice, the starter planet. And you can find out planet info by clicking that. It shows you everything. Sector list, what all you've discovered. Orbit info to find out what's in the orbit of the planet you are currently on. And hey there, SOAR13. Welcome to the stream, by the way. So, simple information. If you do not like the ugly, crazy 3D look of this map, which some people do not, they get really confused by it. I'll show you why in a minute. You can switch to a 2D view. And that'll help you get to other planets much easier. So the green one that's lit is where you currently are. Anywhere that's a yellow line, you can warp to with a C, with an SV. Anything that's an orange line or a red line, you have to use a CV to warp to. Basically how that works. There are other ones. There is a white line that is not currently visible on the map that I'll show you in a minute. The icons also tell you what kind of planets they are if you know them really well. The planet info here, you'll see the brown's barren, white snow, green's temperate, stations actually look like stations, well, in the 3D map. Here are their diamonds, again, there's another brown planet, it's another barren, so it's kind of color-coded, and it's got shapes, and it kind of helps you out a little bit with navigation. Most people use the 2D map, but the 3D map does have its benefits. But yeah, that's how you find the direction to go in another planet. You go out to the orbit, you find a local planet, you click lock target. When you're out in orbit, you'll see it as like an orange square icon out in space. You accelerate it oh, towards it with your shield off. You hit K when you're above 60 kilometers an hour, I think, and bam, you're taking off towards the planet. Pretty easy to warp. Um, you'll need to have at least... You know, enough for your ship to have power. And then you'll have to have the, uh, crap brain. Why are you not working today? Give me a second here. I gotta look in the tree here. Capital vessels. And taxa tank and warp drive. That's what you need. You need those two items. And there's other things that help out. There's a shield generator, different power generators, all kinds of stuff you can put on seat. But at the least, for a CV or SV to warp, you need a warp drive and a pentaxent. They exist for both vehicle types. Short-range warp drive is what they're called for SVs. You can only warp up to 15 AU away. Back to the map here. No, it's not possible if you don't have the warp. You have to have the warp drive and a pentaxent tank to be able to warp from a planet's orbit to another orbit. Like, if I wanted to go from here to that mining station, I would have to have a CV or an SV with a warp drive installed, because they're the yellow lines, so I can make it. Again, if you look at these, they're a little further out. And, it, and it'll give you the distance here at the top left, too. So you'll see that's 23 AU. That's 20 AU. That's 14.2. And that's 11.8. So I can warp to those two with SVs. Now, the map we have is considerably larger. I am in that one little tiny section, 
Ready to explore as a newbie. This is the actual full map for Unknown Skies. Give it a minute. It takes a while for it to load. <laughs> it is a monstrous map. Give me a moment here. Disable orbit lines. It helps. So I am here at this section here, and this is my local station. Why is it not letting me? Wow. It will not let me go out now that I've clicked something. That's annoying. Okay, we'll scroll. And it won't let me scroll. Am I in 2D? I'm in 2D, that's why. Okay, we're in 3D again. If you look here, this is the full map at Unknown Skies and everywhere you can potentially go. So you are just a little fish in a big pond on this. Did you send me the link for the uh, other map? No, he did. This is an updated map that Bayleg's working on. Give me a second to pull it up. I don't have this map available yet, but my understanding is it will be available for everybody to use at some point. That is the wrong... It's for the other monitor. Hold on. We go to desktop. There we go. This is the version of the map that he's working on. Which would give you an external version of the map to navigate by. And it will be interactive at some point. So you'll be able to click through and see information about the specifics of each area. It is a pretty large map. There's a lot here. <laughs> I mean a lot. It, it's so much. So much map. And every server's got a different configuration for the most part. This is just specific to ours. All three servers do have the same map, though. Just so you know. So there you go, basic survival there, and it is pretty basic. Another thing to note, your constructors and all that stuff are marked on the map. It's where you can find them. I do recommend marking locations otherwise. Or you may not find stuff again, kind of like me. <laughs> Let's turn on the light. That'll help us to find our entrance again. I picked a terrible place to park the opening to my little underground area. I really did. I usually mark it with a generator of some kind or something I can stick underwater. That's usually what I do. I did not do that this time. I do recommend you do. <laughs> so you don't have to go through what I'm going through now. With all this vegetation, you may not ever find your way underground again. The hole about directly above my constructor, though. Not that I'd ever see it through all this crap. There it is. I knew there was a hole there. Okay, I'm back down. So when you first start on the server, I doubt it, Bromius. I think the idea is they don't want people taking their shields down or leaving their shields up and warping and being almost in, and almost invincible in PvP. I'm pretty sure that was a PvP consideration. I think the idea is that if you can't just warp, you can't just run away. <laughs> That's probably what that was over. Most likely. Eating is simple, by the way. Um, you can make stuff in here. I recommend just using energy bars at the start of the game. I really do. 
they're easy, they're not super wasteful, and you'll want to save as many of your other resources for other things later. You can always collect seaweed to make energy bars from. And you can shift right click anywhere in the menu to eat something. You don't have to put it on your bar, so. As they come out, you can use it. Same thing goes for medical and oxygen and other stuff. Shift right click helps. You can also shift F to pick up your constructor. Shift F again to pick up all of its contents and move the heck on with your day. Something else that's useful to know. You cannot, for some strange reason, just click an arrow to move all your stuff into this constructor. There's not one to There is for the cargo boxes and all that stuff, which that's going to be my next video is how to use the logistics system. Which you'll need once you advance into more complicated stuff like base building and all of that. You can kind of build an automated chain for manufacturing. And you can kind of make it to where you can centrally manage several structures at once. All you have to do is have access to a structure. That's pretty much it. There's a separate menu for bringing up logistics. I'm pretty sure it's F4. Yep. And that'll allow you to access whatever's closest. And then manage all your inventories from that window. Basically anything that's within, within, within wireless distance. That's more important for mass and volume users <laughs> than us. Though it does help. I mean, it really does. It can simplify a lot of tasks. Um, like I was saying earlier, we grabbed a package in our first video. We're going to access our virtual backpack, and we're going to pull out one of the water generators real quick. And a little bit of energy, because this is one of the first things you're going to have to do as quickly as possible for long-term survival. Now, there is an intermediary device that you can use if you don't have anything else by clicking Tab, going into your survival thing here, and building a water O2 condenser. It's a mini version of the water generator, essentially. It'll make usable oxygen and usable water in small quantities for you pretty quickly. Two of them will support a player. So if you have three people on your team, you will need six to keep up or somebody's dying. <laughs> now remember what I said earlier about marking my opening? You can also do that with the low two generator thing, but it's much easier to mark your opening this way. Let's see, there's my opening there. So we're going to mark our opening right here. Now we have an idea as to where it's at. It'll help us find it. And we can fill this with a little bit of energy, and over time, it will give us stuff. Now, I'm going to cheat the other one in so you can see what it's like. Give me a second. Let me, if I can dig out, there it is. This is the Water O2 condenser here. It doesn't matter where you place this, it will basically generate water and O2 anywhere. So you can put this underground to keep it safe, fill it with whatever you have for energy, whether it be Promethean packs or fusion cells or whatever you have, and got water and O2 being, or yeah, water and O2 being produced in small quantities for you every 74 seconds or 75 seconds or so. We're going to take that. So that pretty much completes the uh, survival portion of this. You'll discover more as you go on. I don't want to reveal too much because, well, that stuff's fun to learn and fun to go into. It really is. But that's that's pretty much your entry-level survival, what you got to do to be able to get through the game and progress and move on. The whole idea is you collect stuff, you kill stuff, you make stuff, and you loot stuff. Pretty much it. <laughs> That's all there is to the game. There isn't a whole lot. Um, medical status messages and all that stuff we'll get into in another video too. So you can see the different stuff you can be infected with and all that. Just trying to cover the basics as quickly as possible. Because I get a lot of questions about this stuff from new players. And it would be nice to just be able to point them to a set of YouTube videos and go here. Go watch these. <laughs> They'll help. <laughs> 
So anyways, I'll be back with another section. Give me a few minutes to get switched over, switch my description, and the stream to make it really easy to shove all this stuff to YouTube later. Means a 48-hour delay for now, but I'll live with that. I'm okay with it. <laughs> They'll be done, and I can just forward them, and it'll, it'll all be super easy, right? That's the hope, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be back. Give me a moment, everybody. We'll get into the other stuff.